Good morning, everyone. Today, we're back with Harry Potter and the Three Hands by J.K. Rowling. As I mentioned at page 116, let's continue. The tufty haired wizard raised his wand high over the head of the bell and floor, and the shower of silver stars fell upon them, spiraling around their now entwined fingers. As Fred, George, and uh, Fred and George led a round of applause, the golden balloons of head burst. A bird of paradise and tiny golden bells flew and floated out of them, adding their songs and chimes to the din. Ladies and gentlemen, called the tufty haired wizard, if you want, please stand up. They all did so. Aunt, Auntie Miriam, grumbling audibly, he waved his he he waved his wand. The seat on which they had been sitting on rose gracefully into the air as the canvas wall of the monkey vanished, so that they stood by the neath and canopy. Supported by a golden pulse with a glorious view of the sunlit orchard and surrounded countryside. countryside. Next, a pool of molten gold spread out of the center of the tent to form a gleaming dance floor. The to be a dance floor. The hovering chairs wrapped themselves around small white cloth tables, which all floated gracefully back to the, the earth around it, and the golden jacket band trooped towards it to the podium. Smooth, said Ron, approving me, as the waiters popped up on all the sides, um, some bearing silver trays of pumpkin juice, butter beer, and fire whiskey, other um, tottering pounds and tons and sandwiches. You should go and congratulate them, said Hermione, standing on tiptoe to see the place where Bill and Flo had vanished amid the crowd of well-wishers. We'll have time later, shrugged Ron, flashing three butter beers from a passing tray and handing one to Harry. Hermione, Hermione comp, hold, let's grab a table. Not here, not here, not there, nowhere near Mario. Ron led the way across the empty dance floor, uh, glancing left and right as he went. Harry felt sure that he was keeping an eye out of the crumb, but by the time they had uh, reached um, the other side of the marquee, uh, most of the tables were occupied. The emptiest was the one where Luna sat alone. All right, if we join you, asked Ron. Oh, yes, she said happily. Daddy's just going to give Bill and Flo our present. What is it? A lifetime supply of Gertie uh, Roots? asked Ron. Hermione aimed a kick at him under the table but caught Harry instead. Eyes watering in pain, Harry lost track of the conversation for a few moments. The band um, had begun to play. Bill and Flo took to the dance floor first, to great applause after a while. Mr. And Mr. Weasley led Madame de la Cour onto the floor, um, followed by Mrs. Weasley and Flo's dad. I like the song, said Luna, swaying in time to the waltz like two. And a few seconds later, she stood up and glided onto the dance floor, where she revolved in on the spot, quite alone, eyes closed and waving her arms. She's great, isn't she? said Ron admirably. Always good value. But she smiled and vished one from her face at once. Victor Crumb had dropped into Luna's uh, vacant seat. Mine looked uh, pleasurably um, fluttered, uh, flustered, but this time Crumb had not come to accomplish her with a scowl on his face. Uh, he said, Who is that man in the yellow? That's Senior Phyllis Lovegood. He's the father of a friend of ours, said Ron. His pugnacious tone indicated um, they were, that they were not about to laugh at St. Ophelius, despite the clear provocation. Come and dance, he added abruptly to Hermione. She looked taken, she looked taken back, but please, too, and wrap up. They vanished together into the growing song on the dance floor. Ah, they are together now, asked Tom, momentarily distracted. Uh, sort of said Harry. Who are you? Crum asked. Barney Weasley. They shook hands. You, Barney. You know this man called Lovegood? Well, no, I only met him today. Why? Crum glowered over the top of his drink. 
watching Cynophilius, who was chatting to several warlocks on the other side of the dance floor. Because, said Crumb, if he was not a guest of Lord's, I would duel him. Here and now, for wearing a filthy sign upon his chest. Sign? said Harry. Looking over at Saint Phileas too, the stranger's triangular eye was gleaming on his chest. Why? What's wrong with that? Grindelwald. That is Grindelwald's sign. Grindelwald, the dark with the Dumbledore defeated. Exactly. Crumb's jaw muscles worked as if he were chewing. Then he said, "Grindelwald killed many people. My grandfather, for instance." Of course, he was never powerful in this country. They said he feared Dumbledore, and rightly seeing how he was finished. But this, he pointed a finger at Saint Phyllis. This is a symbol of him. I recognize it um, at once. Grindelwald cut it into a wall at Dumbledore when he was a pupil there. Some idiots copied it onto their books and clothes, thinking it um, to shock, make someone impressive. Until uh, those um, of us who had lost family members of to Grindelwald taught them better. Um, Crom cracked his knuckles menacingly and uh, glowered at Cynophilius. Harry felt perplexed. It seemed uh, incredibly unlikely that Luna's father. The support of the dark cause, and nobody seemed to notice the dark. Uh, nobody seemed to notice the triangular rune-like shape. Are you uh, quite sure it's Grindelwald? I'm not mistaken," said Crown coldly. "I've walked um, past that sign for several years. I know it well." Well, there's a chance," said Harry. The Saint Phyllis don't doesn't n- exactly actually know that the sim- what the symbol means. The love goes are quite uh, unusual. He he could easily have picked it up somewhere and think it's a cross section of the head of the crumple horn, the snow cag, uh, snow cag or something. The cross section of what? Well, I don't know what they are, but apparently he and his daughter go on a holiday um looking for them. Harry felt he was doing a bad job explaining Luna and her father. That's her, she said. He said, putting at Luna, who was still bending alone, waving her arms around her head like someone attempting to beat off midges. Um, V is she? V is she doing that? Um, asked Crumb, probably trying to get rid of a raxper. Raxper, said Harry, who recognized the symptoms. Crom did not seem to know whether or not Harry was making fun of him. He drew his wand from uh, inside his robes and tapped it menacingly on his thigh. Sparks threw out of the end. Grigovich said uh, Harry loudly, and um, Crom started, started, um, started. But Harry was too excited to care. The memory had come back to him at the sight of Crom's wand. Ollivander taking it, examining it carefully before the trial of the tournament. What about him? asked the Crumb specially. He's a wand maker. I know that, answered Crumb. Um, he made your wand. That's why I thought oh, Quidditch. And Crumb was looking more and more suspicious. How do you know Grindel uh, Gringovich made my wand? I I I read it somewhere. I, I think said Harry. In 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 fine magazine, he improvised wildly, and Crumb um, looked mollified. I had not realized that I ever discussed my wonder with fans, she said. He said, So, uh, where is Gregovich these days? Come puzzled. He retired several years ago. I was one of the last to purchase a Gregovich wand. They are the best, although I know, of course, that you Britons set a much store by Ollivander. Um, Harry did not answer. He pretended to watch the dancers like Crumb, but he was thinking hard. So Voldemort was looking for a celebrated wand maker, and Harry did not have to search for a for far for a reason. It was surely because of what Harry's wand had done on the night that Voldemort had pursued him across the skies, um, that the holly and the fur from the feather, um, um, 
Phoenix Feather had conquered the borrowed wand, um, some something that Ollivander had not uh, anticipated or understood. Would, you know, would uh, Grigovich know better? Was he truly more skilled than Ollivander? Did he know secrets uh, of wands that Ollivander did not? Well, I think we'll leave it here, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye!